Moving from the world of work groups into an Active Directory domain is a big step. Number one, you're going to have to get a special dedicated computer that's going to act as a domain controller. You're going to be installing Windows Server software on that machine. Now, it could be doing other jobs. It might also act as a file server, for example, if you want to share some folders on there. But when you create an Active Directory domain, you are changing the world. Number one, you're not going to be living on your local user accounts like you do at the work group. Instead, we have to deal with domain accounts. Let me show you. In a work group, we're going to have each individual computer storing its own local users and accounts. The moment we add a domain controller though, what's going to happen is we're going to have a whole new set of accounts. These accounts are what we call the domain accounts. The domain accounts allow us to do some pretty impressive things. We can, for example, assuming that this computer is a member of the domain, which is a process we're going to have to do to join it, we can now log in from this computer and we log in with our domain accounts. This gives us a lot of power. Now, a couple of things. Remember, we can log in with the domain account, but the local accounts still exist. Logging into domains gives us some real power. For example, we can set up a share on any one given computer and share it with a domain account. We don't have to worry about, do we have to have some kind of universal account put on every individual computer? We've got real security when it comes to Active Directory domains. We have all kinds of other little features. With an Active Directory domain, if people log in, you can have their desktop automatically download to whatever computer, as long as that computer's on the domain, so they get their desktop and their screensaver, everything just the way they want it. If you want to have special security, you can set up security policies not as a local security policy, but a security policy that propagates throughout the domain. So you can make all the computers have complicated passwords. You can set up login scripts so that every time when somebody logs in, a little script might run. For example, it'll say things like, oh, be aware that the computers are shutting down at 5 o'clock today, so be sure to get your work done before 5. Little things like that that can be really convenient. We also have the ability to organize these accounts in such a way that we can use what are known as organizational units. And the best way for me to show you those is just to show you one on my system. Okay, now if we're going to be doing Active Directory, we no longer use just the computer name like we do in work groups. We now give it a domain name. Now these can be fully qualified domain names like totalseminars.com or something like that. But a lot of times when you have a bunch of internal computers, you don't want to use a full-blown DNS name for the internet. What you want to do is just have your own little DNS server in-house, and then you set up some little local account. A classic one to do is some name dot local. What that does, it allows all of us to talk to each other inside the network, but dot local is not a valid fully qualified domain name, so it works great in-house, but if we need to go out on the internet, then we're, that's a totally different animal, so it's a lot safer that way. So what I've done here is I've got a Windows Server system up and cooking, and I've already configured it as an Active Directory domain controller. Let me show them to you. So first of all, if you take a look here, you're going to see that this is running Windows Server 2019. The name of the computer is WinServer, and you're going to see its full name is, look here, winserver.totaltest.local. I'm the administrator of this Active Directory, so I can give it any name I want as long as it's an in-house name. These individual computers are never going to be web servers or anything that's going to get out so people from the internet can get to them. So I can use terms like this, and that's where I used totaltest.local. It's a pretty common domain name to use for internal Active Directory. Now that's the easy part. Let's go ahead and see what it takes to start making some computers and some users a part of this Active Directory domain. What I've got here in front of me is just some idea. If you look really closely, these are the administrative tools on this particular one. Some of these may look familiar to you, but a lot of these look very, very different. That's because this is Windows servers, folks. This is not regular Windows. So one of the programs I've fired up is called Active Directory Users and Computers. So what I want to do right now is I, first of all, want to add some computers to my Active Directory. So one's going to be Win7 PC.
The other one is Mike Win 10 PC. And you'll see that I've just added a couple of computers. Normally with Active Directory, you don't manually enter individual computers into this setting. What you do is you actually go to that computer and you have it not be in a work group, but actually be in the domain. And when you jump into the domain, it's going to go, okay, well, I need somebody with the authority to put you on that domain. That's because domains have administrators that are domain admins. Don't confuse that with local admins, but a domain admin has the power to add any computer to a domain. So usually I'm doing this from individual computers. Now the next thing I need to do is start making some users. The first thing I want you to notice is that look at all of these amazing number of built-in users. And you also see most of these are groups too. Do you see that? So what we're going to do is we're just going to make some of our own users. Now you can type in whatever you want here, but here's where the actual username kicks in. So you'll see I'm going to be Michael M at totaltest.local. Give it some kind of password. I have password complexity on here, so I have to type a fancier password. And you'll now see I have created a user called Mike Myers. Now if I wanted to, I could, for example, make Mike Myers a domain admin. Now here it gets a little messy because you actually have to type it in the correct way. I can click on check names here and I want it to be a domain admin. And I hit OK. And I've just given the Mike Myers account on my new Active Directory domain a tremendous amount of power. Domain admins are a rare thing and it's something we want to be very, very careful about. As a domain admin, I can do just about anything I want. So keep that in mind. You think a local admin's dangerous, Who oh boy, domain admins are doubly scary. All right. Let's go ahead and do this again, except this time I want to get things organized a little bit with some group. Okay, so let's go ahead and make ourselves a group. So I'm going to make new group, and I'm going to call it accounting. Now you got to be careful about these group names. A domain local simply means it's only going to be for this particular domain, but you can get a lot bigger than that. One active directory can have lots of domains in it, so I could have totaltest.local, and I could have fred.local, and I could have mike.local, and all these different names, and that's what we call a forest. So we have different groups that we spread across different types of forests. In general, just going with a global group at this point is fine. If you want to get into more detail on this, take my Network Plus class. Great, so I've got an accounting group, and now if I want to add to it, I'll just add to a group, type in a user's name, so domain users and groups work pretty much the same way local users and groups work, uh, except we even have a little bit more in terms of detail we can add to it. One of the big issues we run into, especially when you have like a big enterprise, is you might have like six accounting departments. And then all of a sudden you have to have some way to separate these accounting departments. So you could make groups, but instead we tend to use something called an organizational unit. They're pretty fun, let me show you. So an organizational unit is nothing more than a container that helps us organize all of our groups and all of our users into ways that just make more sense for us. So here I've made two OUs and if I want to, I can take individual users, I can just drag them in to a particular organizational unit and it makes my life a little bit easier in terms of organization. Organizational units are just like their name implies, 
organizational tools. You'll see a lot of administrators of Active Directory domains use these just as a way to keep things organized. I mean, if you've got a bunch of different locations, it's a really great way to have everything tucked away so you can find stuff. It's a real benefit. Okay. Now the last thing I want to talk about is a few more things to do with accounts. So let's dive back into account and let me show you some of the special features that you'd run into with Active Directory that you'd never see on a local user account. So I'm going to right click on this particular account and I want you to see some of the things we could do from right here. We could disable account, we could reset a password, we can actually go to their home page if we need to. But if you really want to get into the details, let's go into properties and you've got all kinds of fun stuff you could do in here. Now you'll notice one of the things that's pretty handy, you'll see things like telephone number and email. Those could be used for sorting through and looking for people. It's, they're just organizational tools. If we look on the account itself, well, now we've covered this in other episodes, but we can take a look at all the different kind of things. We can set what hours this person can log in. We can disable account. We can require smart cards. We can do all kinds of interesting things right here. On the profile itself, we can define where their home folder exists. So for example, I can permanently put their home file in one very specific spot and no matter where they go, I can make sure that that home folder always comes along with them. The last user option that's really convenient is a login script. Now you have to dig for it a little bit, but if you take a look under environment, you're going to see a special setting. So if you take a look under environment, I've put some options in here. So this says start the following program at login. In this particular case, I've just got a little batch file, which runs great and the actual location for that particular file. So if you need to have a login script, that's where you're going to put it. All right. Now, for the exam, a couple of things. Number one, CompTIA is not expecting you to become an expert at configuring a Windows server system. What they do expect you to understand is that you're going to have domain accounts, which allow you to do the single sign-on, where you can log on anywhere. That's a big convenience. And the other nice part is that you can now share based on domain accounts. So let me show you that real quick. This computer is a member of my total home. This is a total test. This is a different animal. And you can see that he's a member right here. So he's a member of this total home. Yeah, I didn't use local. I probably should have. And now if I want to share something, like for example, this Timmy folder, when I hit give access to, what it's going to do is bring up not only a list of local people, but I can put in just about anybody I want including this Michael M account. And now I'm sharing not with locally logged in users for my machine, but for any domain user there is. So it makes a big difference when you're working with domains versus work groups.